everyone, Debbie from Debbie's Crafty Hands here. Um, in the previous episode we had lots of paint to use up and I said I'd just show you a few ways of using up the bits and pieces that you had left in your um, mixing trays. So the first idea I had, going back to envelopes, was just basically paint to your envelope. And then you've got a pretty envelope you can jazz it up a little bit more um, and you can just as we were doing on the fingers you can dry brush and then you know go over the dark bits with some dark paint um, go over the um, spaces um, with a a different paint so we're just gonna put a little bit of paint on this one and we can come back to it and it gives you a nice texture oh. didn't you want me to have blue hair well it's more like all you can see on the other camera it was your hair oh okay <laughs> grey sandstorm <laughs> not grey well, not, complete, Sorry. not completely. So we do that side. Do a little bit across. Now there's, I put way too much paint in. I thought I would use a lot more than I did. So it's quite a lot to use up. But I've got lots of things to suggest that you use it up on. So uh, put to one side for the minute. Now, a bit of cloth. That can be used um, as a card front, um, um, part of a cluster, all sorts. It's got some fluff on it, so I'm just brushing the fluff off. Um, but it'll be fine. I'm going to use some of this lighter green. And I've still got some of the blue on the brush. And just sort of paint it on but by the time it's finished it will be quite stiff from the um, the paint and you know you'll be able to use it a lot easier in collages and what have you so, so I'm gonna do the blue then I'm gonna come back and do some pink and maybe bring some other colors in So it's not going to be the blue show today. We will, we will invite other colours to come and play. Just need to get this down to start with. Almost tie dye. Uh, yeah, it's sort of. Now another idea: if you don't want to use your paintbrush, and you don't have to, you can use your fingers. So you can do some finger painting. You can go in and rub it in with your fingers um, this is a, just a bit of old um, packaging cardboard that I put to one side to do some card bases with so I'm gonna go in go across just do this section I've got brown paper underneath which is catching all the drips which again you can utilize for other projects now I'm not going to do the nail polish bit because um, that's a bit trickier because it's um, not going to come off my fingers so easy I don't think I'll give it a, yeah give it a, no that's that's dried on anyway so it's fine so can use bits of card I've got some other bits there if we need extra now the other thing you can do is book pages they make quite good do it nice and thin so you can still see some of the writing underneath but they make quite good card bases for putting 
I don't know, flowers and things like that on backgrounds. Um, so you can either do them um, a full colour like this one or you, I'll show you the next one in a minute we can do a different colour um, to blend the colours okay so that's that painted now the other thing you can do is you can get a bit of tissue or a bit of kitchen roll I've got a bit of plain paper for this so you can see what I'm up to you screw it up and then you just can dab it on and you just keep going over your paper and it gives a very um, blobby effect <laughs> blobby 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 um, but once you've covered the whole of your paper it sort of blends into itself and it's very sort of I don't know the correct word for it but a bit arty I'm going to go over this piece of paper with other colours as well in between so it's not just going to be the blues some pinks in here or something if you don't want it too thick and you can screw your bit of paper up a differently and you can do this with newspaper as well or just a bit of copy paper there is a, another way of doing like stenciling like this um, um, to cut up some vegetables like hard vegetables like carrots or whatever and then you can cut your shapes out with it so maybe you can do that another time so that's that drying so I've got a, a screen of blue in front of me now pop that in the bin um, now another thing you can do with the paint is you can stencil through it so let me have another book page because they're quite handy to work through so I've got this lovely holy stencil. Oh, let's go for another colour, shall we? Let's go for the go for the pink this time. And I'm literally just going to brush over the top the pink. a bit of a twist to this one because you can get a double whammy try not to go hold it down firmly try not to go underneath your, your stencil but what you can then do is get another bit of paper and pop that on the top smooth it down and take the paint from the top so you don't miss a trick and you don't miss a bit of paint so that one's now got splodges on it and we can go back over it and that one's got dots on it now not everyone would want to use book pages but because I make my paper flowers things like this with texture and what have you is is quite nice to have handy so I'm just going to do another color on here and then we'll get some more colors out mixed with the blues
and it's just really just sort of fading the words into the background that's what you're doing um, and you know you use this on a card front and then you put a, I don't know, a, a rose going up Maybe some words or something. But you do have to be careful what book you use because some books have words in that you may not want to send to a loved one. You might get the wrong idea. Now this is the stencil that you might recognise from a previous episode. And this is my disappearing into a hole stencil. I'm going to try and get this in the blue. So I'm going to brush up. I'll hold it down this side. What I'm trying to do is get it darker in the middle and then fade upwards. and out it's amazing how much or how far a little bit of paint can go to be honest I think you've only got not even an egg cup size thing there and it's uh, lasting all these bits of um, paper it's quite crazy really reverse impression on this one as well. I paint over it well enough. Fingers stuck. On the um, rainbow um, picture um, the we couldn't get the full image because it wasn't big enough but it's an A4 image so I'm using a bit of A4 card which means I can get the full impression of it. I'll really gently move it up a bit onto the table. Now I promised our editor in chief Big P that I would do him a picture to go on his wall. So this is his picture to go on his wall. I'm trying very hard not to move it. I mean usually you'd want to stick it down or in place, yeah, you, you could tape it with, but I didn't have very much luck with the tape because it um, tore the paper, didn't it? So. Probably use some um, Yeah. Paper clips, yeah. Um, but normally, low tack tape's fine. Okay, so I just need to. Prize my thumb off the side there. Then again, some of that tape can be a bit wishy washy. Oh, goodness me. Well, at least you knew the name of it. I suppose that's what I should be impressed with that. Five minutes. Right, let's paint the border and then I'll put the other bit of paper over the top and do that same trick. Didn't really show up on the book page very well, but it should on this. 
at least give you a an idea with it. a brayer, not a brayer, a um, Bing Mac. Now that didn't pick up a lot, but it's a good start on a background. Um, and this stencil I can just throw in some water and uh, rinse it off. Quite so well defined there. There you go. <laughs> Do you ever get that sinking feeling? seen done, I'll use this bit of card, is with baby wipes. And you dab the baby wipes in and you use them to basically grade the paint. put it in a ponytail next time. Memo to self, don't have loose hair when you're painting or trying to film. Now, the, these wipes, I mean I'm using a wet toilet wipe because I don't have any baby wipes at the moment. Now, these are flushable ones so these wouldn't necessarily work. But the normal baby wipes, if you do this with them and you get the colour on the, then you can dry them out and then use them as texture in your, your artwork as well. So. so you can put some squiggles on in the lighter colour. Shading with it. Now it doesn't look much now but if you cut it down and put you know more texture on it um, do some mark making or that type of thing can come up with quite a a stormy picture that looks to me like a stormy sky you maybe need a, a sailing boat or something or I don't know a big frigate coming past so you can paint with baby wipes now let's have a bit of different colour shall we let's just Reaching into my tub, add some red in there, maybe. Yeah, just a couple of drips. Otherwise, we you can go and add infinitum. You add another colour, 
<laughs> got to use that colour up, and then you have another colour, and you've got to use that colour up. So. Wipe and smooth and you can blend blend it with the baby wipe and you get the different sort of tones and stuff. Very Bob Brossy. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know about that, but oh, I said almost. Almost, yeah. yeah And you can go back in and add some blue over the top so that the red becomes like a burgundy, oh not burgundy, a purpley sky. And just play around with it until you've got, because these bits are going to be cut into sections for card bases so you know it's not going to be one whole picture necessarily unless you want it to be. And it just gives you some ideas. Um, right, we go back to the paintbrush. I'm getting me. I'm not going to save that because I say it's not a baby wipe, but you can save baby wipes. Um, right, we were doing scrunched up paper on this one, weren't we? So let's scrunch this bit of paper up and dip it into the red. I know these pictures are a little bit simplistic and they'd be good fun to do with the kids in the summer holiday in the summer and the holidays and that if you want to get them to do you some texture paints their uh, paint pictures and show them how to do it and they can give you all sorts of textures and then you've got card bases ad infinitum then you keep going until you filled in your gaps and or until you you like what you see and smooth out the lumps and have some sort of sprays almost go across and give it you know a bit of a lines and stuff it's good Monet, maybe? <laughs> Not quite Monet's um, lily pond, but you know. Not bad for a bit of um, screwed up paper. Right, we'll come back to our envelope. We're working our way back now down the line. And then we can fill in the gaps with some red. I, as I say um, on a previous episode, I don't have many colours of acrylics at the moment, so I'm a bit limited of what I can do. But I am gradually investing in more colours. So, watch this space. I might even get some cadmium red, Bob. That's a, that's an in joke. Um, for my sister we um she was helping me through a very tough period in my life and we put a bob ross um instructional video on and we painted a picture <laughs> attempted to paint a picture i should say on canvas of a um, lighthouse now my lighthouse looked like um, the crooked man who lived in the crooked house had built it and my sister being more artistic with the painting hers looked much straighter and as if it would stand the test of time whereas mine looked like it was about to collapse and I managed to do my sea on the beach um, so that it was going inwards instead of 
outwards. But I just made out that the tide was going out and not coming in, so. Um, but both both pictures had pride of place in their spare rooms, so. Um, and it was a very, very fun afternoon. Um, cheeking Bob Ross back um, on his videos and making fun of him in a nice way. So that's a little memory. And uh, thank you, little sis, for your help on that time. Really appreciate it. Right, what else can we do? Oh, we haven't done the canvas yet, have we? What what colours can we add into that? I think we need some creamy colours in this one. Let's put some cream in there. And keep the blue brush and we're just sort of add some more neutral colours going over. Now obviously I'm just showing you hints and ideas, but you can, you know, just use your imagination basically of what you can paint on. You can use your stencils, the foam stencils. Um, it's another thing I'm hoping to show you how to make at another time. Um, you can, I wouldn't suggest using your clear stencils because they might not um, fare so well. Now this um, fabric is soaking up the paint so you need a bit more paint on the fabric but you just keep going over it uh, until you, as I say, until you've got the pattern you like. So here we go, we've used up the paint, we've had a bit of a giggle on the way. And uh, we'd even use a bit more paint. Make that down. Haven't done this side of the envelope, but I can come back and do that. That's not a problem. But I mean, something arty like that coming through the post would cheer the postman up, and they think, "What the heck's happened here?" Then you never know. They might appreciate it. Okay, folks, thanks for another exciting episode, and I will see you in the next one. Much love. Bye-bye.